Hello, it's me again. I made a video a while ago, but all of a sudden it all froze up. My computer got froze up, but it only froze after I sat on the mouse because I'm on a bench here. I'm sitting on a bench and I had the mouse sitting on my bench and then I moved over and I sat on the mouse and um, I didn't kill the mouse. Thank goodness for that. But um, everything went like dead, so I have to start all over. But I'll, I'll tell you what I was telling you. I'll show you what I was telling you, or tell you what I was telling you. But um, first of all, I was telling you some stuff. Just a minute, let me show you here something. Just a minute, let me move my stuff. I have 16 blocks sewn together. Look at this. Just take a look at, feast your eyes on this. This is 16 blocks sewn together. Is that amazing or what? And then this is the back. What do you think? I love it. This is 16 blocks sewn together. That's one thing nice about this here quilt. This kind of a quilt, it's jazzy, jazzy quilt. That's what I'm calling it. Is that you don't have to get the whole top built before you can start putting it together, before you finish it, or before you, so you can be put some pieces together, then you can sew them squares together, and then you can do whatever, and it just keeps on going, and you don't get bored or nothing. It's just amazing. I'm putting my mouse right here so I don't sit on it. But um, I've, I've been making a few blocks like this now lately. See see how this looks? Looks a little cattywampus, right? A little cattywampus? Well, it is. Now, it is cattywampus, but let me put you down here. And so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, now, see, that's my cattywampus piece. But I keep sewing pieces on until I know that I can get a 10 by 10 or a 9 and a half by, this, this ruler is a 9 and a half by 9 and a half. So, see, I keep sewing on until I know that I can scoot my ruler around a little bit. I had it scooted on here and it looked like it was going to fit, but now it's acting like it ain't going to fit. Just a minute, let me see. Maybe I have to go like this. Maybe I go like this. There, I got it. Okay. So this piece, I can now, I'm going to cut it like this. There. And then I'm going to swivel my mat. And this mat, y'all, I, um, I went ahead and put it on my, um, on my Amazon affiliate link. So you all can see it. But then there's another one I put there too. That is by Fiskars. And I'm thinking the Fiskars might be just as good as this one. But this one is like $37. So, but now, you are worth that much. So remember, buy your own Christmas presents. And then you get what you want. And, um, but the Fiskars one I think is like 23 or something like that. So it's a little cheaper. But I'm sure it works the same. I haven't tried that one. Okay, see now, I just cut around there, and I have uh, the block is now nine and a half by nine and a half. But look how cool that looks with all the all the pieces going. Caddy bumpers are all in different directions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of flannel. I cut my flannel ten by ten. So now this is going to fit a little bit. It'll fit right in there nicely. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch around. I put the wrong sides together. The wrong sides are together. And, um, and I'm going to just stitch around the um, patched piece quilt piece. I'm, I'm stitching on the quilt piece, not the flannel piece, because then I can see where I want my row to go. And I'm giving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on there. 
and then I will take and I will um, put my ruler back on top of this and trim around. Now, also in my in my um, as I'm putting this together, sometimes I end up with because I don't do anything perfect. Sometimes I end up with it not being the pieces aren't exactly right like this piece once i ironed it though this piece the seam wasn't exactly in the right place but once i pressed it with the arm it kind of made almost like its own little dart in there and so then when i stitch this on here it um squares it up now i guess that doesn't make any sense i bet that's just about as clear as mud right there but, um, so if there's a little, like this here, it's going to gather a little bit. So I'm just going to shove that under there. And just go ahead and let it gather. It can gather. It's fine. Like a little pleat in there. It doesn't matter. And so then, because when I'm putting something like this together, and it's all different fabrics, some might be a little stretchy, and some might be not stretchy. So when you start putting them together, you might find when you're stitching that, you know, sometimes you'll get a little pleat, like this is going to have a little pleat here because this, and so I'm just shoving it under, just shove that under there and let that pleat be part of the um, beauty because this is beautiful no matter what anybody says so then now I've got that that um, piece put right there on that flannel so I'm gonna take now and I'm going to get my square nine by nine and I'm gonna lay that on there and get that right squared on there see and even though I cut it square before it's a little bit bigger down here but that's okay because now I'm going to square it up again. I'm going to square it up again with my rotary cutter. These pieces I'm keeping. I don't. This here type of quilt never. That you never ever have not even one piece of scrap. Putting them in my shoebox. I mean, what I should say actually is not even one piece goes in the trash. None. None goes in the trash. Oopsie. See, I have got here a little shoebox. These here pieces, they don't belong in the shoebox. These pieces are going to go back on a piece these larger pieces like this but now these are the edges that I have pulled off that I have when I trimmed it up these are the edges but you know what these are going to be stuffing in a dog bed now I make dog beds out of an old sweatshirt long sleeved sweatshirt and um they make the perfect doggy beds because they're a nice fabric sweatshirts fabric the body part of the fabric is what's the bottom part of the dog bed and the arms of the sweatshirt are what go around it stuffed to make the edges of the little dog bed and my dogs are about 10 pounds each so they fit perfectly in there but all of this is the stuffing that will be inside so that is what that is we don't throw none of that away so now I have this is actually a finished square. It's got the quilt top and the back um, of the quilt. And so now I can still go on this and I can add appliques or whatever, but I'm just going to show you now. Let's see if I have another one. I think I have another one ready to stitch here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so here I have... Here I have another square that's ready to stitch, and I'm going to just show you how I stitch these together. See, this is what's fun. So you don't have to wait till you get all of these squares done before you 
get going. You know, I've got over here my stack of squares. I got a stack of about a hundred squares there, and um, but and they're ready for their final backs. And so whatever mood I'm in, yeah. Oops, no, I'm doing this wrong. Put the right side down. Put the flannels together before you sew. I almost did that wrong. I put the flannels together so that it's the back sides together. And then I'll go over here and I'll stitch. Now I'll stitch the um, two pieces together and I'm using a, a quarter inch, a, about a quarter inch seam to stitch those two together. Now, now, my scissors are stuck to my magnet. There. See what I did yesterday when I was sewing? I said, boy, I need one of the magnetic pin cushion things. Or it's not a cushion, but a pin. But then I went into the Hubster's um, toolbox and I found magnets. I found this magnet, so I put it in that little plastic bag. And now I have one. Look, I can just throw the pins on there and they stick right to it. And I don't have to step on them or pick them up off the floor because they're not going there. Okay, see? So that works. So there I've got the two, those two squares sewed together. And the um, raw edge is on the outside. The raw edge is on the outside. And it, I love this look. So let's see, um, do I have, I think I have two more. Okay, yeah, these two, these two are sewed together already. So I'm going to put these two like this, the flannel together, backsides together. And I'm going to put, so here, and I, may, I, I make sure, and it's not going to probably go throughout the whole quilt that I'll have all my corners matching, but I kind of try to get them all, because they're all the squares are the same size, I try to make sure I have the seams matching here, for now anyway. Now when I do my, my um, blue jean quilt, it's going to be different. It's not going to... Um, matter if the mat because all all the squares on my blue jean denim dungaree quilt my hubster still calls them dungarees because i need a clean pair of dungarees i need to get me some new dungarees my dungarees is too big he wears a 33 in the waist of the dungarees now and it wasn't that long ago i he was wearing a 40. I wish I could lose weight that way, but he eats plenty. He eats plenty. He just he's lost that weight, and then he's had all kind of tests to see if there's anything wrong why he's losing the weight. Nothing. Everything's good. So it's just meant for him to lose the weight and be a skinny mini. But he calls them dungarees. But so I'm gonna have me a dungaree blanket. That's gonna go in after this one. So here, now I have got four squares together. See how pretty that looks? Already. And see, all of the seams are going to be like on the outside of the quilt. And that gives it, that, that gives it the look I want it to have. And that is going to be wonderful. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did now. And I don't know if this is a right or a wrong. It's just the way I did. It's just the way I do things. Sometimes I'll just show you the way I do things. You know, it could be right, it could be wrong, it could be in the middle somewhere. But I'm going to get myself some squares. Hi, Papa, what's up? How's your coffee supply? And my coffee supply? Oh, it's still good, hon. You, okay, you want it heated up? No, I don't need it hooded. It's fine. It's not, I don't need it hooded or heated or any of that okay. stuff. Thank you, darling. He always makes sure my coffee supply is in good standing. So I'm going to just find a few of these pieces that are different colors. Um, these are beautiful pieces. Thank you, Joy. My friend, my friend Joy, I'm telling you, she spoils the voodoo out of me. And um, she had sent me 
all of these beautiful pieces of fabric and they are nothing but beautiful and so they're all different geez you just don't know them. and so I'm not matching them up at all I'm not doing anything to really match but what I'm going to do first here let me give you a look see let's see I'm going to I'm going to start by putting right sides together and sewing these pieces together, sort of. Okay, I'm not matching. I'm not worrying about the size or anything right now. Just making sure that there's two straight sides together. And I'm just stitching them along. Oh, oh thank you, sweetie. Now he brought me cold drink. I got plenty of drink. I'll never dehydrate as long as I got Papa. Okay, so there, see, I just put those two together. And then I will come with this piece. And I'm going to... I'm going to stitch those two together. And now if you wanted to get all fancy, and I might do that on a couple squares, just maybe do a whole square in all blues or a whole square in all pinks. I don't know. I don't know that yet. I can't see that far in advance. Boy, this is a nice fabric. It's very kind of silky. Okay, so I'm going to put those two together. Now, as I put these together, it's making a larger piece of fabric. See there? Do they match? Heck, nobody. They don't have to. And then, let's see. Let's put these two together. Let's put these two together like this. Oh, that one I probably need to put a little press with the hot iron. Okay, so I'll get these two together. Let me make sure my iron... If it sits up too long, it turns off automatically, which is a good thing because I've always been one to kind of forget to turn my iron off. So then we'll put these two together. this one. Okay. Now, now I'm going to, let's see how we'll do this. Maybe this brown one, this one. That's about the same width even. I'll put that onto here. I think this is already going to be video number 15 in this here series of mine. My series. I'm a serial sewer. Mm. See? We're going to put this out in the refrigerator so it can be. No, leave it in the refrigerator because it's fine in there. Thank you. We have a birthday cake for my my daughter. It's her birthday today. And, um, Papa was concerned it should come out of the refrigerator, but yeah, we'll leave it in there for now. Okay, now I'm going to take these two pieces. Now see here, I've got these two pieces stitched together. These two pieces, I'm going to put this with this. Okay, wait a minute. Let's see what's going on with this one. Okay, this here. Let me put this here together. And as you can see, they're not matching up. Except right now I'm just putting straight, putting some straight edges together. Thread. 
And another thing I'm doing here too is I've got bobbins that are filled with different colors of thread. And so when I run out of bobbin now, what I'm using, what I'm doing is I'm just using, I just take one of my bobbins that's got whatever color thread in it, and um, that's what I fill it with. Okay, and then let's put this brown one, and then I'll have them all stitched together in those three strips. And this is, this is like so much fun. This one here, th these blocks that I'm doing right now are more like um, Crazy Quilt. And from what I see in the videos. I find them so many different names. Okay, so now my edge here isn't straight, but that's okay. I'm going to take this piece now and I'm going to put right sides together. But I'm going to kind of make sure that when I put it together here, when my stitching goes along here, it's going to be, it's going to catch it all. So now what I do is I, I'm going to go and stitch along. And I'm stitching those two pieces together. My thread gets hung up underneath my presser foot here because I'm not very professional today. I might be professional tomorrow, but today, no. Why does that thread want to do that? I'll just snip it. Okay, there we go. And there we go, and there we go, and we're sewing right along. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my rotary color cutter, see I've sewed those two together, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut right outside that stitch line. And then this is, this is now part of my stuffing. And then I have this piece and I'm going to put this piece, I'm going to put this right here. See, now this how it's not even at all along this line? No, it's and it doesn't have to be. So we're going to lay this down. See, this is pretty straight right here. So I can lay that right along there, and these pieces will get cut off. But I'm going to stitch them first. And so... Stitched. Now let's see how this is going. Okay, now. So now I'll take my rotary cutter again and I'm going to stay on. I like this rotary cutter because when you're cutting you do this way and the knife is out and then when you're done cutting the knife is in automatically so I like this one I've got some other ones too that you've got to actually turn the knife blade in and if you don't that thing is sharp okay see there you go that scrap that goes in my shoe box this one's big enough to use for something else so now press that flatten that out a little bit with the iron. So now I could probably get a nine and a half by nine and a half out of this, which I could, but I don't want to. I want to do this one different. And so I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to get nuts with that thing and I'm going to go like this and cut it like that. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut it like this. See there? And I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut it like this. So now those are all just cut up. And I'm going to get a drink of this drink that Papa just brought me. There, now. Okay, so now 
Now I have these here pieces. Now I've got to put it back together again. Why did I cut it up if I'm just going to put it back together? But then I've got some of the other pieces that I've got from the last. See, this one I cut off of the last one I put together. And um, this piece I cut off of the last one. So I've got pieces that I cut off the last one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and um, I'm going to cut, I'm going to put here right sides together. This is two straight edges. So I'm going to put those two right ed straight edges together and I'm going to stitch those. And, and I may do some of the blocks, too, that I might stitch them um, and not cut them up like that. But look what just happened there. See how my pieces got all different shapes? All different shapes is what happened to those pieces. And so then now I'll take this here is two kind of straight edges. See, it's straight here, sort of straight here. And sort of straight right here. So I'm going to put those two pieces together. And what I'm looking for is to kind of know where I'm going to put my seam, which I know it's going to go right along here. And that way I'm going to catch both sides. And I stitch it before I cut it. I will rotary cut it after I actually stitch it together. And I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm just showing you what I do. This I've watched many quilting shows, and I and even from the professional, beautiful quilters that um, spend so much time and energy. Even though I don't want to do something just like theirs, I get little ideas of how to do mine. And so I put the their ideas along with my ideas, and um. And then, and that's how you just, I don't know what you do, but that's how, that's how it works good for me. So now I'm going to put this piece, see it's kind of straight here, or what do I want here? Yeah, I'll put here, kind of straight there, and so I'm going to, and it's straight there. So I'm going to put in a, the right sides together, and I'm... So sometimes I put wrong sides together on this quilt, on these quilt pieces. Sometimes I put the right sides together. And everything goes. Everything and anything goes on this style of quilt. Anything and everything. I just love it. I had a lady that sent me a Christmas card. And in the Christmas card, she mentioned that she... Um, had some fabric and she would like to send me if I wanted it. And first I was thinking, oh, maybe not. I, maybe I have enough. But I've been thinking about it. I think I'm going to go ahead and email her and say, you know, maybe I would like to have that fabric. And, um, because then I don't know if she's just got scraps or yardage or whatever, but whatever it is, I can use it. When I feel. So, yeah, I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to tell her, okay. So if you're watching, I say, okay. She, all I remember is she lives in Michigan. And she was going to send it on a slow boat. <laughs> Bless her heart. Okay, see, so now I've got this to cut off over here because my seam is right down here. There's my seam. So now I'm going to... Okay, let's see. I'm going to go with my rotary cutter. Where is that seam? There is a seam there. How come I can't see it? Oh, does it, the thread just blends right in. Probably need my glasses on. I don't know. Okay, let me just go down like this. Hopefully I didn't cut into the seam. No, nope, it's fine. Okay, so now look, see how them patches are? All the different shapes and sizes? 
And so now I want to, let's see, then I'm going to look here and see what I have. See, because I don't, look at these pieces. Just look how beautiful they are. And pull that one off. Put that in the shoebox. And then I'm going to, let's see. See how little these two pieces are? That one's not much, and this one's not much. Well, I'm going to take those two not much pieces, and I'm going to put them together. I'm going to put them together on the, the two straight sides and put them together. And I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, before I do another video, I'm going to work on the lighting in here. Take a lamp from somewhere else and bring it in here. Maybe switch that lamp that I have in here. I have lamps, they're just all over the house. Okay, now, let's see what we have. And when you put two pieces like this together, then you end up with such small, small, um, pretty pieces. Look at this small triangle in there. Look at that little tiny one in there. And I think that is just amazing. Okay, and so then what I want to do is I still have, okay, these ones are kind of not enough to make a seam, so... Maybe I will, let's see what I'll do with this. Okay, this, okay, this piece, this piece can go on this piece. And I just don't really know, I'm just, like I say, you certainly do not have to be a seamstress or nothing to do this. All you need is a sewing machine and, and a plug electricity in your house to run it. Or maybe you have a treadle. And maybe you want a slow stitch. I don't know. Any of that stuff works, though, you know. Though, you know. Don't you know? Okay, let me see what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to get this one piece bigger. Just getting that little piece bigger. That's what I'm doing, just getting that little piece to be bigger. See, and you don't have to have the rotary cutter, you can just cut it with your scissors, too. There we go, see? So I got that cut. See, I, my piece is getting bigger. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Now this piece, maybe I can put this one right along here. Now see, this isn't straight at all right here. Along this piece, it's not straight at all. But I'm going to take this piece, which is not really straight at all either, and I'm going to put it with that piece, but I'm just going to get it to where to where um, I, it's straight, it's flat, and I'm going to just stitch along, along there, I'm just going to stitch, okay, To, and then I'm going to cut along that seam line there and get some of that extra off. And then let's see what we have. You don't, this is like a no plan. Oh my goodness. It's just like once, once you open it up after you have made it a little bit bigger, it's like a surprise kaleidoscope. You look in a kaleidoscope and you turn it and it's always a surprise of what you see. Okay, so we're going to get that. Okay, now, now I'm going to look at this piece and see what I, where can I put it together? Okay, and I'm looking at this now, 
and I see a straight edge here. Let me see, what do I have there? Okay, I've got a straight edge here. Really don't have a straight edge on here. I don't have a straight edge on this one. But I'm gonna use this straight edge here as a guide and I'm gonna put this down, right sides together, and I'm gonna make sure that that straight edge is over fabric. All right, so I don't have a hole in it. Yeah, does that make sense? Clear as mud? As long as everything is clear as mud, then you know what, you, what I'm doing. Then you'll know what I'm doing as long as it's clear as mud. Huh? I'm going to be outside a little bit. Okay, baby. Oh, I got them. Yeah. I got packages that need to go in the mailbox. They're on the floor by the table in my area there. Um, just a minute. I'm going to put this on pause so I can make sure. Where's my, oh, I think I can pause this. I'm going to go right like this. Okay, had to help Papa find the packages that had to go in the mailbox. And um, trying to get everything mailed off that people purchased in my sale. So far, I've got a lot of them sent off, but not all of them yet, because I'm still waiting on a few payments. So anyhow, I thank everybody who has purchased. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. 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 You helped me pay my taxes. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Okay, and so now I'm going to go again and cut that extra off. There we go. That's extra. Now I look at this. Let me press it and get it flattened out. And, um, okay, so now I'm going to take my 10 by 10 and 9 and a half by 9 and a half and see if it'll fit on here or do I have to add more. Ooh, looks like I just got it. See, now when I lay my ruler on there, I can move my ruler around and, you know, you can kind of guesstimate if you've got enough. And so that one was just fine. You know, it's kind of close. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put it here and let's see. Now I'm going to just cut it to the nine and a half inch square. All these extras will save because I may put them together on another or if they don't, if they're too small, because I also use these small squares in my, in my, um, oh, what do you call them? Slash quilting. I use them small pieces. These small pieces like I have in this pile, I sometimes use them in my slash quilting. But I also use them in another style of quilting that has no name. In my no name quilting. But see, this piece that I'm going to cut off, that one definitely will go on another square. See, because that I just cut off, but look how pretty and the pieces, you know, how that is so pretty. That one will go into another square for sure. And then I'll get my fourth, fourth side and see that one here, how it's straight right there. That piece will go onto another. So then there you go. That's my square. So I'll take another another piece of flannel. And see this is flannel, so soft. And put the wrong the right side down, put the wrong sides together. And um, then I'm going to now see this here I didn't have my seam right here it wasn't it wasn't sewed exactly straight but when I pressed it I pressed it down so there's like a pleat in there a little bit but it presses fine and so I'm not going to let that worry me because that 
is going to still be a part of the the quilt because it is such a jazzy crazy quilt and it's just the craziest quilt ever and um that's just part of it so as I sew it together I'll make sure that it is in its square and it will be just fine okay so now I'm going to take that I just put four pins in there to make sure it kind of stays in its place and and then I'm going to stitch around See, there I have a little piece of a fabric that wants to stretch, and so I'm going to just push that extra under the needle, and I push with my skewer. Don't push with your finger, otherwise your finger is going to be part of the quilt. You do not want your finger to be a part of the quilt. Okay, so, and I have learned that by experience, that you don't push with your finger. Had to have needles surgically, needle pieces surgically taken out of my index finger. That's been many, many years ago, but that lesson has stayed with me all these years. We don't do that, and so if you have a chopstick or a, and wood is good too because if the needle hits that wood, it's not going to hurt your needle or your machine. So a wooden skewer or a chopstick. Thank you, sweetie. And um, to save your fingers. You know, save your fingers. Let's see, somehow that jumped in a different shape. I don't know what that did, but that's okay. It's still going to work. Because some of the fabrics are stretchy and some of them are not. And so it kind of, it kind of, um, when you're stitching then, it kind of stretches some of it and the stretchy fabric and, and not the other non-stretchy fabric. And so, no. And so this one edge right here, but it's exactly the same as the, is the flannel so it's fine so I'm gonna go here and see as I look at this it's kind of it kind of lumps up a little bit right here because it's not totally flat so it's kind of lumping up and I don't let that be bother me either that is just fine that is just beautifully fine so now I'm going to trim see that little piece that little piece yeah put that in the shoe box that's part of the stuffing for the dog bed I mean, we recycle, we reuse, we re-everything. And nothing gets thrown away. Nothing gets thrown away. And then we'll trim here. You see there? There's dog bed stuff. We don't throw anything away. Okay, so there's my square. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? I love this fabric with the Peanuts characters in there. But then when you look at it, you look at that. You've got such tiny little squares. Small, I'm not squares, but patches in your work. Because we, instead, now like I say, I might leave some in to with, um, some of them might stay with, um, you know, just straight edges. I might do that, that they're all squares or all triangles. Or so. And some of them, some of my squares I've made are already like just two different kinds of fabrics and, and just made a checkerboard. I've done some like that. I've made them all different because that's what I want. That's what I want in my finished quilt is for all different. Do I got one I can... Oh, no, I don't have one I can sew that to right now. So this one's going to have to wait. But 
that one's going to have to wait. But I have, I am having so much fun with this, guys and g gals, guys and gals. So much fun. And, um, and there's a couple other ideas I have that I want to do with squares. And, um, and I'll, I'm going to get them, and I'm going to try and film as much as I can with this be, because I'm, I'm getting um, comments that just absolutely melt my heart. They just, I love the comments. Please comment and let me know. And if you have ideas, too. Somebody left me a, oh, look at that piece. Somebody left me a comment once when I did my little townscape. They said, you need to do a train. And so that's been on my mind, is, is I want to do a, a, a train. I'm going to make a patchwork train on one of my... Why am I putting them in? I just throw them down here in my... I got a bin down there, and I just throw all my extra pieces in the bin so they don't pile all up on my table. And I just keep my shoebox there to keep my scraps, which is going to be dog bed filling. And... Um, and, and I am having so much fun with this. This this is fun. It doesn't get boring because you just keep changing things. Doesn't matter what color thread that you're using. And it, um, I'm going to look at you guys. And um, yeah, I am going to clean this area. I start, as you know, you probably notice that everything changes behind me because I keep changing things around in this room to see how I can make it a little bit more um, comfortable or easy to get to things. Now I know that I have to clear, because at the back of this table, I've got a lot of things that are stored on the back of the table to make them easy to get to. But now I've noticed when I start sewing the pieces together, when I get the bigger pieces, the bigger part of the quilt, I need that part of the table. In fact, I need it to be pulled away from the wall a little bit so my sewing will go straight when I'm putting the bigger pieces together. And so that's one thing I have to work on is get that, get that part of it straightened up. And like yesterday, I have these two filing cabinets that are short, and I had them in the middle of the room. And I see, can you see them there? I piled, oh, Papa did, piled one on top of the other. And that's the closet back there, but we took the doors off. You can see the doors are kind of stuffed in the corner back there. And so by taking them doors off, I'm able to have, I got the closet shelf there that I cut, and most of the stuff up there is beads and a few things up there and um then i have the totes the big totes and i've got them things are sorted in those totes and so and i've got them stacked up in there and who knows i might change it tomorrow you never know and i'm working on i need to get my um my table see because i've got my sewing my cutting table is is there by the window and I have a few things on that table that I have to re... I gotta move them around a little bit because I'm gonna start putting together some packets. You all might be interested, well, some are interested in the, um, what do we call them? Slow stitching um, kits, so slow stitching kits. So I'm gonna clear off my table and get the kits started, putting them together. And so that we'll have them available, and I think they're going to be available on um, on Etsy. So whenever I will let you all know when those are available, so that those of you who want a slow stitching kit will um, will be able to go and purchase one. And I know I sold some of them that were donated um, on my sale. But these ones are going to be on Etsy, and um, the people that bought them off of my sale, they got a really, really good deal. Because my friend who put them together, she spent a lot of time, a lot of effort on them. But they're going to be fun. They're going to be fun. And so I'm looking forward to getting them together. But that's what I'm going to do back there on that, on that table. And... Um, 
because I'm telling you, I just think everybody needs to be stitching something. So in the kits, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be probably start with a 10 by 10 square, and then it's going to be fabrics, there's going to be embellishments, there's going to be the needles and pins and the threads and everything, some beads and buttons, there's going to be everything you need to start a project of slow stitching. And, um, and I, and I got a feeling that people is going to, I've already had three or four people that have said to me, let me know when they're available so I can get one. And so I know that they're going to be enjoyed. And so, yeah, I'm excited about that. And, um, my sale was a little, I have to be honest, my sale was a little bit overwhelming for me. Um, we're still sending out, the th I was hoping to get everything sent out in two days. And in fact, I think I said that at the sale, but um, I found uh, that doesn't work. <laughs> no, it's a lot more, it's, it's more complicated than that. And so, but now just now Papa brought out, I think five packages to put in the mailbox at our, that are being shipped this morning. I'm still waiting for um, payments on some, and I think I got everybody invoiced. Gosh, I hope. Anyway, yeah, trying to keep it all straight. I'm 71 years old. These young people that do their auctions and their sales, I give them so many kudos that they can keep all that stuff straight in their mind. For me, I'm, I'm looking at, at somebody I have sent off the wrong emails. I've, I have like in, in like one of them, instead of putting .net, I put .com in, and I find myself, um, you know, if somebody's address is 1234 Elm Street, I might put 1342 Elm Street. I just, my brain doesn't work like it used to work. Well, maybe it never worked. I don't know. But anyhow, I won't keep you up. I won't keep you up any later. I'm going to, though, because I always do, I'm going to read out of a book. And right now I'm reading a lot out of my um, Lovingly book and that I got from my friend um, Aaron and by Helen Steiner Rice, Poems for All Seasons. And because it is the winter and Christmas season, um, I'm reading... I'm reading um, out of the winter season. And so here this one says, I put the bookmark in there, so my unicorn bookmark. That was sent to me by a, a subscriber too, and darn it, I should have wrote their name on there. But, and, and really it's like a keychain, but I left it on the card it came on because I love it as a bookmark. Okay, God so loved the world our Father up in heaven long, long years ago looked down in his great mercy upon the earth below and saw that folks were lonely and lost in deep despair. And he said, I'll send my son to walk among them there so they can hear him speaking and feel his nearness too and see the many miracles that faith alone can do and see the many miracles that faith alone can do. I just read that line twice. For if a man really sees him and can touch his healing hand, I know it will be easier to believe and understand. And so the Holy Christ child came down to live on earth, and that is why we celebrate his holy, wondrous birth. And that is why at Christmas the world becomes aware that heaven may seem far away, but God is everywhere. And that is so true. My husband and I were just sitting on the porch this morning watching the rain and watching the, the squirrels were coming to eat even though it was raining. And we have so many trees and such around our house. And that's just proof that God is everywhere. So anyway, I thank you all for watching, and um, hopefully you join me on the next video. This is number 15, so hopefully you'll still be here for number 16. 
and um, hopefully I'll make it a little bit different. Some of them might be so much the same, but um, I'm going to keep um, taping as I finish up this this quilt, and then when I start my next one, you'll be there too. But um, I'm going to have more than one quilt made with this, with these. I have um, had so many, so many, um, squares sent to me already by subscribers and I have had so many that are telling me still that they're working on one and they're going to be sending me one so all of those subsite subscriber quilt blocks will go in my quilt as well and quilts it's going to be more than one I'm going to have quilts all over the place but I'm hoping that all the subscriber ones will go in one quilt so, and I've got so many already from subscribers that, and I haven't put any yet from the subscribers into what I've got sewn together right now. And um, because when I put this, the one together that I'm doing with the subscribers, it's going to be the same type of quilt, but it's going to be, I think it's going to end up being mostly subscriber squares, subscriber squares. That's right. Okay, I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and keep crafting because that is what will keep you sane, for lack of a better word. Okay, God bless you all, and thank you so much for watching. Now here is where we turn it off, right here.